G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 11 degrees this morning, so that's pretty good. Um, haven't got the coat on. Um, first day back up in the shed for ages, or well, it seems like ages, but um, the sun's not up yet, it's not quite 6am yet, so another half an hour before the sun comes up probably. Um, yeah, it's just not too bad. Um, supposed to be a clear sunny day today and later in the week we're going camping and so we're certainly hoping that um, we get a bit of decent weather but um, looks like this week sometime we might get about 20 mil um, look and that's just a 25 percent chance so who knows but um, on Thursday yeah we we're popping down to Kinkuna Beach which is near Bundaberg here and um, the the couples that we went up to Cape York, like it was 12 months ago since we went to Cape York and Dave and Jody and um, Mick and Margaret from Mergen, um, we've been trying to get together all this time since, you know, three months later we started, six months and there's always something going on, you know, Jody changed jobs and um, Mick and Margaret are retired but they're, you know, busy with kid duties, same as Judy and I are and we have the business and um, tractor shows to go to and things that we've committed to so um, and helping with kids on school holidays and things like that so um, it's taken us all this time to get a weekend where we could all get time off and um, run down to the beach so so we're going to pop down there and have a camp for a few nights um, just a bit of a catch up and see what's going on um, I know yeah we, we all catch up we've, we've got a private chat group um, called Cape York Crip 2024 um, 2023 and um, yeah we chat on that all the time and and you know ring Mick or whatever goes on and the girls are girls talk way more than us blokes but <laughs> that's fine and um, so yeah we're going to go down there and having a catch up and sitting there looking at the beach having a few beers as, and um, yeah just just catch up with everything that's going on um, yeah it'll be a good thing so um, nice and relaxing, which is probably what we need. Um, get us out of the shed for a bit, but um, I haven't been in the shed this last week, really. Um, I stayed home. I've been working from home doing, um, well, look, mainly just emails and the website stuff. Um, the, there's a few International Harvester engine kits I'm working on. And, yeah, just tidying photos up and... Um, there's a new thing called Adobe Express, and it's it uses AI, artificial intelligence. So um, it sort of has to make up for me because there's not much intelligence. So I bit, get this artificial one in it. It gives me a top up, <laughs> helps me work stuff. But I've been using that to um, do bits and pieces, and I'll probably use that to do a thumbnail for the stew now and things like that. Just just working out how to use it and things like that. And look, it's a, I'm enjoying using it. It's, um, you can actually put in a search term. Um, I, I tried one the other day, tractor pull. And I'd done a poster up with a tractor pull and it found pictures and all that and put in it. Uh, it wasn't particularly what I wanted, but it was, um, um, there was four of them to choose from and you can tell it to choose for more, choose more. So yeah, look, interesting. So. But yeah, with me dicky knee, with the torn meniscus knee, like my right knee's always dicky. Yeah, <laughs> it's just bloody dicky, and um, always plays up. But the left one that was starting to play up, like um, where I tore my meniscus that time, um, that I damaged the week after going up to the Queensland Heritage Rally. Um, look, it's it's come remarkably well quickly. Um, but in saying that, uh, I didn't come to the shed. Like I, I sat on the, I sat on the thing and helped Paul with his ute, you know, on a stool and um, anything I've done, I've made sure I've been sitting down and not walking around a lot and things like that. And in the shed, because it's a fairly large shed, I suppose. Um, yeah, even though I have a walk around trolley, I never seem to take it to the door. <laughs> so, um, but look, it, it is coming good. Like it, it, it come good surprisingly quickly. And so. Um, like this morning, there's no pain there at all. Um, it's good. I'm up the shed. I'm going to spend the day up the shed here tinkering about. And if it starts to give a little bit of a tickle up, well, yeah, it'll stop. I'll, I'll pop back up to my little 
shipping container office and go from there. So um, we'll just see how we go. But I've been Saturday. Um, there's a place we like to camp in at Kinkuna, and um, I think it's Kinkuna Camping Area, Burrum National Park. And look, it's bloody beautiful down there. Um, I popped the drone up the other day while I was down there and took a little buzz, and I'll I'll see if I can remember to put that on. Um, but I'm going to take the cameras down there, and yeah, we should get some lovely sunsets and sunrises, and mainly sunrises over the ocean there. But um, we hadn't been down there for ages and ages, and last time we went down there, um, the track in had quite deep puddles all the way through. But um, Jude and I, because it's only like 30 kilometres from home here, um, we suggested, well, yeah, we'll go down and have a look. Um, checked at the camping site that we like, um, Pomona Rick, it's the same site Pomona Rick likes. Um, checked that the site's still okay and still usable and we're allowed in and all that. So Saturday morning we did a quick run down there and um, locked the hubs in, let the tyres down, locked the hubs in and went for a putt around and oh we went right down the bottom to the, I think it's One Mile Creek and had a look down there and um, we could have, we just bobbed in around the campsites which is a, um, a bit of a fiddle and yeah, muck around but um, I could have just dropped down on the beach but I said that I just didn't want to drop down on the beach. Um, that means I've got to come home and wash all under the car and do all that sort of stuff because it's a salt water beach so I said oh, I'll just stay up the top and poke around so we did that and yeah the the government area to the south which you've got to pay for um, it's sort of quite clean and tidy and all that but the council end down the other end well yeah there's plenty <laughs> in the canopy on the cruise you're getting sticks scraping along the top all the time and things like that so um, the pay end is the best for us at least anyway so we're going to work with that um, and yeah the site was fine we found another couple of sites that it would do um, we've got to fit three camps in there so um, Jude and I we're taking our camper trailer in and um, Mick and Margaret are bringing their camper trailer and Dave and Jody are um, just bringing their ute with the awning and they have a tent that goes on the end and um, they're not bringing a caravan in because of the, the roughness of the roads getting in. Um, back years ago, the track going in, they used to keep it graded, but they don't do that now because um, look, back probably 20 years ago, a long time anyway, there was a couple of young fellas from the Shalom Catholic College and they had a, a break up down there. And um, anyway, they must have got on the piss a bit and, and they were playing chicken on the beach with their motorbikes and they hit and died. And um, back then they, we didn't have a flight, a care flight helicopter in town here. So for ages and ages they kept that road in graded and they really kept it in good order um, in case they had to do an evacuation by ambulance or something. But now they can pop a helicopter in if they're needed. And um, yeah, the track's rubbish. <laughs> um, yeah, you go down. Judy took a bit of footage. I'll, I'll try and remember as we come in to um, pop a camera on the bonnet just so you can see it come down and up. And um, the the banks between where the normal holes are for water, um, look, they would be a metre high. And so you sort of come up and over and back down. And, but there's no water in them at the moment. So, but, yeah, on a normal... If, if we got, I say, 100 mil of rain while we're in there, well, coming out... We would um, we would probably have a couple of feet of water in each hole, and you're down and up, and there's there's probably twenty or thirty of them. <coughs> Pardon me. Not a problem. Not a problem for a bloody old V8 Land Cruiser. <laughs> um, yeah, we went in there the other day, and it, look, it was just nice, and, and we sat up on the sand dune there and had a cuppa, and I popped the drone up for a bit of a squirt around, and um, it was just a nice nice day. And um, yeah, we came home from there and. Um, trying to rest up a little bit, had a snooze and um, yesterday I had to get the chainsaw out and I got some old fence posts to chop up for firewood for going to going down there and we packed the camper up and I loaded, I started packing up the back of the ute to go away for, we were staying down there for four nights, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and next Monday sometime we'll be coming home so um, daughter Adele's looking after the place again for us and looking after Sansa the dog, because it's National Park, so you can't take a dog down there, but people do. But um, anyway, we had a yarn, <laughs> had a yarn to a few people along the way. Yeah, pull up and bloke pulls up for a chat and 
talking to the fella, another bloke, yesterday about it, going down there. And he said, you ever catch any fish down there? And I said, no, I must have spent hours fishing off that bloody beach. Can't find a gutter or anything and, and just can't catch fish. And then um, talking to the bloke next door, he reckons he couldn't either. A bloke from Gladstone we're talking to, he was doing no good there fishing. And um, the Creek to Coast show on Channel 7 of a Saturday Arvo, they went to BCF and bought all this gear, went down there buggering around and they didn't catch anything either. So if they don't, we're not going to. So I'm not taking any fishing gear. I'm just going to sit up on the beach and drink beer and have a look at the world and have a chat, I think. So that'll do. It'll be a nice, nice couple of days away. And um, yeah, the other weeks, you know, we just couldn't get together because either we got kids or Mick and Margaret, they, they do the grandma, grandpa thing like we do. And, and um, yeah, so we're, we're all looking forward to it. Um, my mate Paulie rolls in last Monday afternoon and we got his little Austin going. He reckons it's never gone so good. And so he, he pops in, he says, I don't know what you're drinking, but here's a slab of rum, Bundy rum and co cola cans and a couple of bottles of bloody, Jude drinks Benrock Station Crimson Cabernet is one of the wines she likes. So a couple of bottles of that. Here, take that camping with you. But um, talking to Paul Friday evening, we were just having a yarn, and he said, you know that bloody little ute? He said, when it, when it left here and went home, he says, it hadn't run like that in years. He said, it just run beautifully. And um, he said, the other day, he said, yesterday I went to start it, which would have been last Thursday, I suppose. He said, you think that bloody thing would start? And it's got an electric pump right at the back near the tank, but as the line comes up, he used to have a check valve in at one time. He had trouble years ago with the fuel running back, but... We thought, well, with an electric pump right back at the tank there, we probably didn't need the check valve. And so where it comes up the chassis, then he's got a little, one of those little El Cheapo plastic fuel filters there. And he said that was dry as a bone. And um, he's got a separate switch for the fuel pump. So, and that's sort of an anti-theft thing. You've got, actually got to switch your pump on, you hear it go brrrr, and builds the fuel up and away you go sort of thing. But um, yeah, he said it wasn't getting fuel up to there, so I've left him to crack the pipe. He had to go away for the weekend to his auntie's 90th birthday, so he probably hasn't worked on it yet. But yeah, there's a banjo on the carby, so I've asked him to crack that with the pump on and see if it flushes through to make sure. But um, he's drained the fuel tank, no rubbish in the fuel tank, because um, I, was, I was wondering if was there a bit of um, rust flakes or something like that getting into the check valves on the lift pump itself. But um, he's got a brand new aluminium fuel tank made to sit in underneath. So, and it's all clean. And he, he drained the fuel before he went to Billawheeler. And um, he helped a lady with a prom. You know, the kids go to their prom and someone wanted to go in with him in his ute. So he, he took them around and he thought, oh, fuel's a bit stale. I better drain it out. So he drained it out for that. Then he drained it out for Billawheeler. And then he drained it out again the other day just to make sure there was nothing no rubbish, and he said it's clean as a whistle. So, um, so he's going to fiddle with that this week when he comes home, when he comes back from being down the sunny coast. So, so yeah, the bloody little Austin's giving him trouble, but yeah, she was going running like a top when it left here, and um, he said, "Oh, don't don't think I'm complaining." And I said, "No, you're right, mate. <laughs> We're all good there." So, um, yeah, his little Austin is still giving him a bit of drama. So, not to worry. Um, but yeah, not not a lot else has gone on. Oh, the carby, the carby on the Ford 2000. I've got it. <laughs> I sat in a chair in the sun the other day because I didn't want to walk around, and I've um, I've stripped it out, and I've got that little set of drawers I bought with a seat on, and I've used that as a parts that thing. And um, the I could, I could never get it to run flat out, but I could get it to idle nicely. And it turns out there's a little brass plunger in there and I thought when I put it together last time it was going all the way up but I feel it's jamming up there so um, there's a YouTube channel called Dan and Rachel Gingell and they they have a part shop in America and, and they do videos on bits and pieces um, on, on fixing tractors and um, yeah they, they know their stuff without a doubt and um, she was saying about the plunger um, hang on to it and just polish it up so it drops in easily. Well, I think my plunger's a bit tight. So that might be some work for today. 
Um, I'm, I'm still trying to stay off this leg. Even though it feels good, um, I'm, I'm trying not to do too much with it. Like yesterday, I cut some firewood to take away camping and packed the camper and did a bit of that. But um, we had the club meeting yesterday afternoon and um, the knee was knee was good. And um, But last night in bed, it just played up like buggery for some reason. <laughs> and, but a different pain. So um, I had the tablets and it's, it's all good this morning. So I don't know what went on it. It's sort of, yeah, when your leg feels like it's going to start to cramp, but um, it doesn't, so that's what was going on. But yeah, so this morning it's fine, um, no worries at all, so we'll, we'll just see how it goes, I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Getting old and buggered. Um, the, I showed you the new trailer last week, talking to the um, Kempies, Kemp boys yesterday, they want to buy my old trailer, so I've got to get it roadworthy, and I had a look, and I wasn't happy with the lights on the back. They're starting to bit faded, so I ordered them last night. And, um, there's another spare tyre over near the bush there that uh, I had years and years ago, and um, so yeah, I might get that out and see. The tyres are good, but the spare keeps going down, so we'll look at that. And um, yeah, so I'll have a bit of work to do on the trailer just to. Oh, no, the trailer plug's looking a bit dicky, so I think I'll put a new one on. <laughs> Things like that. Just bug around with it, eh? And, um, and the, ball, the ball hitch off the brand new trailer. We're going to take off the brand new trailer with the handbrake handle and all that and pop on my on the red trailer. And um, I've, I've never worried about a handbrake on it. I don't know if I've got to have one for roadworthy, but I'm going to roadworthy it for them. And, um, but it's never had a handbrake on it. And I've, I've never had it because I don't have a wheel on it, I have a foot that goes down and the foot just sits tight. And if you're not quite lined up, you can wiggle it on the foot. So um, I'll have a look at that and see. Um, I've got that much shit around here, I've probably got a cable here anyway. Who would know? So, so um, the Cruise Master hitch um, for the new trailer, I'm going to order that today. And that'll... So that means I can take the brand new ball and handbrake assembly off the old trailer, off the new trailer, sorry, put it on the old trailer so that's all nice and shiny new. And I can put the Cruise Master hitch that I like to use. They're bloody $560 now or something. Anyway, not to worry. It's only money. <laughs> you can get very close to the bottom of the bucket sometimes, I bet. And, um, Anyway, so I got that on the go. I don't know when that trailer's going to be here. Um, yeah, there's no real mad rush for it. But um, I know the brakes and the bearings and all are great on our, on the old red one. Um, it's just a little knick-knacks and I'll get some bloke into... Um, I'll hook it to the back of the Land Cruiser. I'll get some bloke, mobile roadworthy bloke in to have a look and I'll jack it up with the forklift so he can spin the wheels and do what he needs to do and um, we'll go from there. But that'll be after the new trailer comes. So, um, But I ordered a new set of lights last night, and um, so we'll just see. But, yeah, looking forward to the new trailer. The only thing I'm thinking of is where the, where the winch is up the top there because it's got the Dyneema rope on it, which is a nylon-y rope on it. Um, I might make a little cover of some sort to sit over that while it's not being used. Um, and look, just a bloody plastic pot, a, a black plastic pot would be enough just to keep it out of the sun. Um, I do have an old bonnet I put over the over all the workings on the red trailer. Same thing, just so the rope doesn't bugger up on the winch. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, we've had the business for sale for, for oh, a couple of years now. And I was talking to a bloke recently, oh, about 12 months ago, we planted the seed. And um, he's in the game, he's in the... Um, um, He's in the tractor game. Um, doesn't quite do what we do. <coughs> I mean, but he's doing workshop work, field service work and all that. And um, I'd given him the figures ages ago and he and his wife have been looking at the business and going through it. And we share the same accountant. So, um, and I know this bloke fairly well. And um, a young family. And um, so we share the same accountant. So. Yeah, I told the, I rang the accountant and I said, so and so is coming in to have a look at the figures, um, show him what he needs to see. And, and their mates, like their mates out of work as well. And um, 
he said, oh, there was a discrepancy last year because eBay bank fees didn't go in properly or something like that was going on. And um, he said, what about that? And I said, everything. No, no secrets, everything. Everything he needs to know or wants to know, fucking let him have a look. So, <clears throat> so that's what they've done. They've been in to talk to the accountant and the accountant, by all accounts, reckons it's a cracker business. Um, they went and had a talk to the bank and the bank says, yep, no worries with the finance if you want to go ahead with it. So um, we had a meeting on Friday with them. There's no agents involved. Um, we had a meeting with them on Friday and we come to a price and so the deal is now, um, I said, it's up. if you're serious about it, go and get a commercial contract done up, bring it to me and Jude and I will sign it. So it may go through the time frame, who knows, no mad rush, but it's one of those things, once things are happening, you need to keep the momentum going and push them along a little bit. Um, we've agreed to, um, yeah, they ask us, would Judy and I sort of consider um, having a consultancy with them? Yeah, as in, um, if they get stuck three months down the track, Jude and I are still there to pop in and help out um, as a paid gig as a consultant. So we said, yeah, we'll do that. And um, yeah, two weeks before the business would sell, they would come into the business for free and learn the little nicky nacky bullshit bits about the business. And um, two weeks after the settlement date, Judy and I would stay there and keep going. So there's a full month's training, but then, um, yeah, we would stay around, make ourselves available for a little while. Um, there'll, be, there'll be things they won't know to ask and we won't even think to tell. So, um, so it's not a signed, sealed, delivered deal yet, um, but it's looking positive and um, I pulled a bit out of the price to help. And they're a young family and um, they've got young kids and things like that. So they're the people that um, you want. Um, us old blokes, we get a bit old and stale and bug around and you get a new set of eyes in there and they'll see opportunity that Judy and I never saw and um, and I do know how to build the business up bigger but Judy and I often talked about it and we thought well you know all the effort to go into that to build it bigger are you going to have something at the end that someone can afford or do you just keep it as it is because it's a it's it is a cracker and um and go from there. So they want to keep everything exactly the same. The sponsorships we sponsor, they want to keep the same. The commitments we've made for the Fergie muster and um, the Rum City, um, our, our rally, um, they're happy to keep that going. Um, they've got a gazebo on that of their own, so there's, a, there's, op there's, there's opportunities to bring their business into our business and make them work together sort of thing so and I can see all that happening nicely so so that might happen um, we might be retired by the end of the year <laughs> who knows it'll be quite a change if we are um, you know um, at the shop there I, I do different stuff to everyone else like the shop doesn't miss me if I'm not there for a week sort of thing because I can work from home and keep emails going and things like that and I, I just do different work to everyone else so um so yeah, they've got another, well, they've got two other businesses that they work along with, so um, it'll all integrate in as time goes. So we'll see. So that's something promising, something that, um, well, we're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to be that old bloke at 80 still banging around the shed being a bloody nuisance. Um, now I'm 60 banging around the shed being a nuisance, but <laughs> we'll see. But, um, but yeah, look, not a lot to report. Um, I talked to James from Sparex through the week and um, we ordered a heap of parts for the Ford 2000 out here and a lot of them come in. Um, I ordered under the dash on the Ford 2000, there's a, there's a little panel that goes around the steering rods and comes around and it just tidies up all the wiring and all that and that was missing. And so the only place I could find one was quality tractor parts and <laughs> Look, it's, it'll do the job. Um, I'm going to have to get the grinder out and, like, it doesn't... Once I fettle with it, it will fit and no one will know the difference. It will look nice. 
but I do need to fettle. <laughs> um, setting it up there, like um, to get it to match up near the tank further, I'm going to have to run a run a, a pen line around through and and take say 10 millimeter and and shape that to get it to sit up nicely to line up with the originals. I'll probably take the camera out and give you a bit of a look at that. Um, we'll see how we go there. Um, yeah, the parts that came for it, I've got a, a VRS set, which is a top gasket set. I have a bottom gasket set coming that's not here yet. Um, I have a water pump to put on it, um, a new generator, a new regulator, new fan belts, um, a complete wiring harness. Now, the wiring harness that I could find, because... I've, I've pulled the dash out and I can see where the mice have chewed the wires. So I thought, oh, bugger that. So Sparex have a wiring harness for a diesel tractor. And so I thought, bugger it, I'll get that and I'll work out how it works, you know, for the charging system and all that sort of thing. So um, I've been sitting down in my armchair there with the marking things out, measuring and buggering around, and look, it'll work fine. Um, because I have a Bendix starter, um, I'll have to play with the wires that go down there a bit. Um, you know, instead of going to the starter to excite a solenoid, I have a solenoid on the firewall, so it has to excite that. So I have to change that a little bit. So um, we'll see. But, but um, look, that's enough for the chat part. I'll take the camera out and I'll show you these panels and I'll show you a bit of what I've been up to on a bit of a walk around. I got the big fire heat burnt the other day with the young fellow. I don't know if I showed you that. But, um, yeah, look, thanks for stopping by. Um, hang around for the videos at the end. There will be a bit, bit of a walk around and a, a doodle about. And um, I, I really want to get back onto this Massey Ferguson 20 and get those yellow bits done. We haven't had the weather for it. Now I've got the weather for it. Then I buggered my knee up. So I'm going to try and get some of that done. Um, August 24 we're going on a tractor run and I said why don't we just register another tractor and so she can take one I can take one she's oh you know it's all money and I said yeah that's all right you know well <laughs> so I'm not saying we'll do that but we might <laughs> we'll just we'll just see what happens there anyway so all right catch you later eh we'll see you next week okay you can see I'll sit in my little chair here and I've got the little renegade tool trolley here and I've used that while my knee was buggered to sit here and pull this holly carby apart and I've used the drawer to hold all my parts in. Now this little plunger here where it goes up into the housing that is supposed to drop in under its own weight well it gets caught right up in the end there so I think I'll polish all that up if I can get that all sorted and I bought new gasket kits and that out of Steiner in the States for it and yeah it's been all right I could sit and look out the door here and <laughs> and I've been sitting here with this wiring harness and you can see it's all there I've, I've been buggering around with that like this is where the voltage regulator goes that's all exactly the same the the only different wires that I can Fine. Uh, yeah, it even goes to the same safety start and all that sort of thing. So well, um, that will do. I'll get that worked out. Now, whoop, hear me kicking the buddy show around a bit. Now up on here, on the back of the forklift, this is some of the parts that came through the week for it. Now, the quality part numbers for the panels under the dash are 41488 and I'll take you over to the tractor and on the right side this is the panel and this is the front half that comes around so I think the front half I'll probably come in there and work with if I can but the, the main hydraulic pump pipe, the suction pipe here, it seems to be in the road a little bit. So I'm going to check that that's sitting in properly where it's supposed to be. And when I try and bring this side in here, 
to get under there, well, I think I'm going to have to pull some of the bottom out here for that. We'll just see. <coughs> Pardon me. We'll just see how that goes. Now, we'll go around the other side. And this panel, this front panel here, that's jammed in tight. And you can see it's right up tight against the tank under there. So the um, what's going to have to happen there is I'll probably run a, a pen mark down through here and then try and bring this up at the same angle as the tank. So yeah, probably come in there somewhere and keep this little strengthening thing. And that might lift that up. But the other problem I have is when you come in through the back here, that's jammed hard against the gearbox cover. And you can see that the gap's way up here, not down there. So I think along the bottom here, I'll probably have to pull 10 or 15 mil out of here. And yeah, sort out what we do there. But these are all the jobs you do when you're just sitting on your ass. You can't do much, so you, you have a bit of a look and a fiddle, really. So, um, yeah, so I've got a bit of playing to do there. But look, that's no big deal. That's just how it works. Um, I've got a new harness for the safety start here. Um, the dash. I'll probably put an aftermarket dash in, I think. The alternator now is coming off. And there's a water pump, new water pump to go on. Like there's just random bolts missing here and there, but no big deal really. Um, yeah, so I, I haven't really done anything apart from sit and fiddle with that and pull the carb off. That's about all that's happened with the with the 2000 at the moment. But when we come back over here onto the back of the forklift. I'll get rid of the paperwork for those panels. And out of Steiner in America, I found the correct top radiator hose. So I brought that in, so that homemade hose I made is no more. Um, Bearco battery leads, colour-coded Ford Blue. Nah, they're just bloody blue. Now, the fan belt, I got the two fan belts. One's for an alternator for 4600 and one's a generator, so I hadn't made my mind up then on which way I was going to go with that. Now, I don't know if you can remember or not, but the, the rear lift arms are very sloppy and so is the shaft. So we have a new hydraulic lift shaft. We have new Sparex bushes. This double six nine four three bushes for both sides. Steiner, because this is a popular tractor in America, Steiner also have a complete hydraulic lift cover O-ring kit. So I bought that. That come in this week. We have a VRS set from Sparex, and because we will probably put rings through this engine. Taco cable. Um, I'm still waiting on a couple of bits. New Conrod bearings, we're presuming they're standard. We don't know any different. A voltage regulator. This little rubber here, that's from Steiner. And it's FDS332. That's the little rubber for around the throttle there. So that'll be tucked away for painting. And an oil seal for the PDO and some stainless welsh plugs. So I may pop the old ones out and put them in, we'll just see. I, I did put new standard ones in, but and look, for what I do running cool, and I think I'll probably just leave them in. So that's about it for that. Um, the other bits and pieces of I bought just as a extra were, you know, rocker gaskets and bits and pieces, so um, we do have quite a few bits, but today, um, even though it's a 
Look at that, it's a lovely day outside. The sun's thinking about coming up through the trees. The utes there are all ready to rock and roll pretty well. Um, yeah, it's ready to go, go camping, so am I. Um, fridge is nearly full. And this is us a drink fridge. <laughs> and there's the burnt heap where we burnt all the boxes. There are a couple of old armchairs that were just buggered, so I chucked them on the fire the other day. And um, I'll pull all that steel out, pull the frame out. The bloody dog, I'll zoom in here, she loves sitting down there in all the ash and shit. Why, who would know, but she's, it's just, a, oh, well that's mainly sand where she is, but she digs herself a hole and digs in and sits in and enjoys herself, so <laughs> that's a bloody dog, eh? And that's a, that's the trailer that Paulie carts his um, little Austin around in, so there you go. Lovely day. Um, I better stop talking and get stuck into it, eh?